Hey friends, welcome back to my channel. It is finally that time of year where we get to start making all of the spooky and fun Halloween DIYs. You guys know that this is my absolute favorite time of year and I love making these types of videos. Today's video is going to be a Halloween compilation video of my favorite 20 Dollar Tree Halloween DIYs. These are all super easy to recreate and will definitely get you in the Halloween spirit. If you're not yet subscribed, please do consider subscribing down below. This first DIY is one of my all-time favorites because of how quick and easy it is. So I'm just going to be starting with these foam bat stickers from Dollar Tree. They have a really pretty glitter effect to them, and I wanted to make them look like they were almost flying across these vases. So I picked up these two vases from Dollar Tree, and they are in the floral department. And all you have to do is just start applying your stickers to the glass. So I just wanted to use the black ones here but the silver ones and purple ones are really pretty as well you can mix them up for a really nice effect and I'm just kind of staggering them a little bit and making sure that they kind of look like they're flying upwards to the sky if you make a couple of these these would be beautiful across a table for a centerpiece or just a couple around your coffee table I like to put these on my console table just to light up at nighttime my favorite is to put some of the flameless candles in them that are on timers. That way every night they illuminate and they just look so spooky and it is such a quick and easy DIY. You will be done in no time. And here is how they look with those flameless candles. For this next DIY, I'm going to be using some of the rub-on transfer stickers from Dollar Tree. So I picked up two different ones here. I also grabbed some of their craft paper. It's just their brown wrapping paper. I'm also going to be using some string. This one is from Dollar Tree. And then I will be needing three hardcover books. So Dollar Tree does sell a bunch of hardcover books. It doesn't really matter what kind they are because we're going to be covering up the cover anyway. But you just want a nice book stack. The first thing I have to do is just take that craft paper and wrap it around those hardcover books just to basically make my own dust jacket on the books. We will be adding some of these transfer stickers to the binding area and I don't want to ruin the books. I just wanted this to be a seasonal thing so this way the book will be completely protected and it gives it a nice neutral look. I ended up adding a little bit of tape to the corners just to help the covers stay on that book. Now that all three are covered in that craft paper, I'm going to go ahead and grab my rub on transfer letters. So I went with these two different ones here and I am going to be using both. So basically you just want to pick a saying, any saying at all, that is going to have three words in it. Or if you want something with four or five words, you can just add a couple more books to your book stack. So I'm going to be going with All Hallows Eve. Another really fun one is to do the words trick or treat. Or if you want to go with a two book book stack, you could just do Happy Halloween or Hocus Pocus. So all you have to do with your rub on transfer letters is just cut out each letter individually. Then you're going to want to start from the last letter and work your way backwards. Have them all cut out. You just want to peel that paper backing off of your transfer letter and it's going to be attached to that clear plastic. So then you just want to place that onto the surface wherever you want to transfer it and then apply some pressure. I'm just using a little tool here, but you can definitely just use your fingernail. And once you start to apply pressure, it's almost going to turn gray a little bit. And that way you'll know it has transferred from the clear plastic to the surface that you want it to stick onto. I actually ended up removing the dust jacket from the book just to make the process a little bit easier. And once I did that, the process did go quite fast. So now that I have all of my letters on my books, the last thing I want to do is just grab that string and I cut a nice long piece. I'm going to wrap it around the books a couple of times and then just tie it into a bow on top. And here is how they turned out. I love this one because it is super versatile and you can pick your favorite saying to transfer onto any books. For this DIY, I'm going to be using some of the table tennis balls from Dollar Tree, as well as some of the gingham ribbon, also this black ribbon here. I did also pick up the twine at Dollar Tree and then I just had some black acrylic paint on hand. Now the other thing you're going to need for this is just some scrap pieces of white fabric. 
if you have an old t-shirt that would also work for this and sometimes Dollar Tree actually does sell t-shirts that you can use the fabric for for this DIY. So the first thing I wanted to do was just cut my fabric into squares and my squares ended up being about seven and a half by seven and a half inches. Now I'm going to take those table tennis balls out and basically what I want to do is just take one, put it in the center of my square and then I'm going to wrap it around that table tennis ball. So we're making a ghost here. Now to secure the head inside of the fabric, I'm just gonna take some of that black ribbon and tie it into a bow. Then I just trimmed the ends of the ribbon so it was nice and even. And then I repeated this same process five more times. So I had a total of six ghosts. Using that same black ribbon, I'm going to be cutting a small piece off and then just tying it into a knot after I loop it around. So what I'm doing here is just creating a loop that I can then hot glue to the top of the ghost's head. I want to be able to string this on a banner and I figured this was the easiest way to do it. Next, I'm going to add some eyes to the ghost by just taking the end of a paintbrush and dipping it in that black acrylic paint and then just adding it to the fabric. The last thing I want to do is just take that gingham ribbon and I'm going to be cutting a couple of pieces, just a few inches long each. And this is just going to act as an accent piece in between each of the ghosts. So I'm going to take that twine and I'm going to string one of my ghosts on and then I'm going to take that gingham ribbon and then just tie it into a loose knot in between each of the ghosts. And the reason I made it loose was that way I could still adjust it because when I hang it up, I feel like you always kind of have to adjust it to make sure everything is nice and even. And here is how it turned out. Next up, we are going to be making another garland. So for this one, I'm going to be using these wood cutout shapes from Dollar Tree. So I went ahead and picked up the jack-o'-lantern as well as the ghost, but they do have some really fun different shapes that you could also use for this DIY. I'm also going to be using some acrylic paints as well as some twine from the Dollar Tree. The first thing I have to do is paint my wood cutouts. And for this one, I definitely was going for a bit of a rustic Halloween look. So you will see that I did add a little bit of brown to my orange just to tone it down quite a bit. I do think this DIY would be so fun though if you used only pastel colors and went for a very bright Halloween look. So after I let that dry, I just took this large brush here dipped it into some of that same brown paint and then very lightly brushed over it, almost giving it a dry brush effect just to give it that really worn in rustic look. Use that same effect with the ghost. So I just took my paintbrush, dipped it very lightly into that brown paint, made sure to wipe most of it off and then very lightly brushed over that white acrylic ghost with that brown paint. Once everything was dry, I just took the small strings that came with those wood cutouts and I just looped them through and tied them into a knot. And then I cut a long piece of twine and added my wood cutouts and just made sure to rotate the pattern. And here is how it turned out. Dollar Tree does also have a cat as well as a witch hat in these same wood cutouts, which would work great for this DIY. Next, I'm just going to quickly show you how to make that other Halloween banner that you just saw in the last clip. So for this DIY, you're just going to need these poster stickers from Dollar Tree, as well as that twine from Dollar Tree that we've been using. Now, the last thing you will need are some book pages. So if you have an old book laying around or if you want to thrift a book or pick one up at Dollar Tree, you can just cut out some of the pages. But if you don't want to do that, you can go ahead and just print them out. That's what I did here. I just went online, printed out some book pages that I could use for this DIY, and I did print them out on cardstock. So it would be a little bit sturdier. Once I trimmed them all out, I just took my scissors and basically cut a small triangle out of the bottom just to give it a bit of a ducktail so it had a nice appearance when it was hanging on the banner. So after I just did that first one, I traced it out and cut the rest. I just wanted my banner to say the word Halloween, so I have nine book pages here. So now that everything is all cut out, I'm just going to take my letters and start to apply them to my book pages. The last step is just to go ahead and use my hole punch to create some holes up top and then using that twine to string it into a banner. And here's a closer look at how it turned out. If you have a large mantle, I think this would look so pretty if you made two of them and kind of just staggered them and did the words happy Halloween. 
For this next DIY, I picked up this mason jar from Dollar Tree. They do have a couple of different ones. This was just the largest one I could find. I'm also gonna be using more of those Dollar Tree table tennis balls, a Sharpie marker, but you could just use black paint. I also will be using this gingham ribbon from Dollar Tree. And then you will be needing a piece of white fabric. So you can even use an old t-shirt for this. Dollar Tree does actually sell a floor duster that looks kind of similar to this. That could work as well. And then finally, the last thing you're going to need is either some clear fishing line like this or just some thread. So to get started, we're gonna be making a ghost exactly how we did before for that ghost banner. So I'm just taking a square piece of fabric here, putting one of those table tennis balls inside, making a little head, and then tying it off with my black ribbon. So next, I'm just gonna be taking my Sharpie marker and just drawing on two eyes. But you can definitely just use some black acrylic paint for this as well. Next, I'm going to be taking some of that clear fishing line and just cutting a small piece. So now I'm gonna take the lid to my mason jar and just put a little bit of hot glue and then attach that line to it. So basically this is going to help make sure that our ghost can be suspended in the jar. And it's gonna kind of give it the appearance that it's floating because you won't really be able to see the fishing line. So once I had it attached to the ghost, I just put it back into the jar, attached the lid, and then just as a really cute decorative element, I made this little pet ghost in a jar tag. This is actually a free printable on my blog Blog. I'll leave the link for that in the description box of this video. So I'm just going to go ahead and take some of that gingham ribbon and tie it around my jar and then attach this little tag to it. This is a really fun activity to do with kids or even at a Halloween party or maybe a school Halloween party. It's pretty simple and kids just adore having their own little pet ghost in a jar. This next DIY is going to be another really simple and easy one. So I'm starting off with this wood skeleton that I picked up at the Dollar Tree. Now I know sometimes Dollar Tree will have a ton of those wood DIY projects for the holidays and they can just look a little intimidating sometimes or just like they're gonna be a lot of work that you really don't wanna get into. But I just wanted to show you how fast this one can be. So all I did was just take some white chalk paint, cover the entire front of it. It doesn't have to be perfect. And then I went ahead and just took some brown paint on a brush, brushed off most of it, and then just went in to add a couple of little accent pieces, like he was maybe in the graveyard and had some dirt on him. But it's just a really fast and easy DIY. This next one is my all-time favorite Dollar Tree DIY ever. So I'm starting off with these two wood cutouts from Dollar Tree. So it's the Frankenstein as well as his bride. Now the first thing I wanna do is just remove that twine at the top and I wanna fill those holes in. So to do that, I'm just using some of the lightweight spackling from Dollar Tree. Now while that's drying, I'm gonna get started on my boards. So I picked up these three ones from Dollar Tree. They don't have to be this exact one. They have a ton of these long decor signs any of these will work for this. So to prep these, I just took out the string in the back and then I just took a screwdriver and removed those little staples. Next, I'm going to be hot gluing them to this foam board that I picked up at the Dollar Tree. This is just gonna provide a really good base and you wanna make sure that you're getting quite a bit of hot glue on there so everything is nice and secure. Now that all of my boards are glued down, I'm just gonna be taking this cutting knife here and just trimming off that extra foam board. The next step is going to be painting my boards. So I want these just to be a nice, clean, and neutral white color. I'm gonna be using this white chalk paint here. This is my all-time favorite one. I use this constantly. I'll leave it linked down below. It's just from Amazon. So now that my boards are drying, I'm gonna get started on painting my monsters. And I'm just gonna be doing something really simple. So for the bride, I just painted her hair black with some black chalk paint that I picked up at Dollar Tree. And then I used that same exact paint just to create some hair on the Frankenstein monster. Now for the bride, I wanted her skin tone to kind of have a grayish look to it. So I just mixed in a little bit of black with some white chalk paint. And then for Frankenstein, I mixed in some green acrylic paint with that same white chalk paint. 
Now I'm just gonna go over his bolt with some shiny silver paint. Next, I'm gonna show you how you can make a frame for a large picture like this using these five gallon stir sticks from Walmart. So they come in a pack of three and I believe they were about $2. I measured them out to see how long I needed each one to be for all four sides. And now I'm gonna be using this wax paint to kind of give it a stained wood look. This is one of my favorite tricks for getting that look when you really don't wanna get the wood stain out. It's really simple. I just got this one from Amazon. Now, once I let that dry completely, I just went ahead and glued it around my board to give it a frame. And next, I'm gonna be using some of these tumbling tower blocks from Dollar Tree because I wanna give my monsters a 3D effect because we wanna add some lighting to this sign. So to do that, I'm just gonna be using my hot glue to attach some of these blocks to the back that way, when I hot glue it to my sign, they have a 3D effect. The lighting element for this sign is just going to be some of the string lights from Dollar Tree. So you'll see here that I did glue my blocks kind of in the center of the wood. That way I had a nice base area to wrap my string lights around where it would illuminate the entire face. So once I had those on, I just hot glue them to my board and these are the Dollar Tree string lights. You can usually find these in their floral department. And now to attach it to my board, I'm just gonna be using some command strips. Now you could definitely hot glue these to the back of the board, but I figured that this was an easy solution. That way when I wanna take them off, I can just pop them off with that Velcro and then put them away for next year. So once I had them glued to the back, I just went ahead and wrapped my string lights around those Jenga blocks that were hiding behind the monster. That way I could kind of illuminate the entire face pretty easily. Once I got to the end of my strand, I just tucked that little tail underneath so you wouldn't see it peeking out. And here is the final result. This one is honestly my favorite because of the sheer size of it, but also at night it looks so beautiful. This next DIY is going to be another super simple one that is definitely kid friendly and you can put together with just a few pieces. So the first thing we're going to do is grab one of these wood houses from Dollar Tree and I'm going to be painting the entire thing with the Dollar Tree black chalk paint that I found in the crafter square. This is going to be the base of your haunted house and now you can just really have some fun with it and decorate it however you want. I use some of the mini pumpkins and hay bales from Dollar Tree just to add some really cute elements to the front and then I found these really fun stickers to just add some characters. There are so many different ways you can decorate these mini haunted houses and you can even add a faux tea light behind it to illuminate it. Next up, I'm going to be turning this Dollar Tree dish towel into an accent pillow. So they have a bunch of different designs. I just really liked the haunted house on this one. So to get started, I'm just going to go ahead and trim off that extra white border. This is just going to be a small no sew accent pillow. It's really simple and you can do this with any of the dish towels at Dollar Tree. Next, I'm going to start attaching the two pieces together using my hot glue gun and just starting on one side and working my way all the way around, but I do want to leave a small gap at the bottom. That way I can turn it right side out and then fill it with some polyfill. Once it was nice and stuffed, I just closed it up with some more hot glue. And that is it. It is so simple. For a more finished look, you definitely could sew this pillow, but sometimes the hot glue gun is just easier. Next, we're gonna be creating a bunch of crafts with a witch theme. So the first one is going to be this witch potion bottle DIY. So I'm gonna be starting off with this sign. This is actually one of my favorite signs Dollar Tree has ever done because these witch bottles are really cool. So the first thing I wanna do is make them self standing. So I did go ahead and cut them off from that hanging sign that they were attached to. And next, I'm just gonna be taking some of these wood blocks from the Tumbling Tower game at Dollar Tree and just gluing them on the back on a little bit of a diagonal. That way they can stand up all on their own. This next step is completely optional, but I really wanted to cover up that hole. So the way I'm gonna do that is just take some of this lightweight spackling from Dollar Tree, fill in that hole, let it dry, then I'm gonna sand it down smooth and actually just repaint that top portion of the bottle. You could just use something to cover it up like a ribbon or even glue a plastic spider to cover up that hole or just leave them if you don't mind the look of it. And here is how they turned out. These are so great to incorporate into any type of witch decor. 
Next, we are going to be creating a light up witch sign. So I'm starting off with this wood wicked sign from Dollar Tree. I'm also going to be needing another sign from Dollar Tree. The image on this one does not matter because we're just going to be painting over it anyway. Just needs to be large enough to act as a base for our wicked sign. So now I want to go ahead and just remove this paper first. This part is not really necessary because you can just paint on the back if you like, but the paper on this one did come off pretty easily. So I figured it would be just okay to go ahead and peel it off and then repaint over that side. So I'm going to be using that same white chalk paint that you guys have been seeing me use throughout this entire video. This one does cover up really quickly. So I went ahead and just did one full even coat and let that dry. Now I'm going to get started on my wicked sign. So the first thing I'm going to do is just remove that twine and I want to fill in those holes so they're not visible. Just taking a little bit of the lightweight spackling from Dollar Tree on my finger and then filling in that hole. I'm actually going to do the same exact thing to this wood cutout of the cat because that will be on our sign. So once that is completely dry, I'm just taking a sanding block and making sure to sand it smooth. And now we can get started painting. So I'm going to be using the Dollar Tree Black chalk paint for this. This one is usually in their crafter square and I just did one even coat over the entire wicked sign as well as the cat. Next I'm going to take three of these wood blocks from the tumbling tower game from Dollar Tree and I'm going to use that same white chalk paint and just paint them all white. This is going to help them camouflage into our sign. So now that everything is painted and dry we can start assembling our sign. So the first thing I wanted to do was just add the cat to the bottom right hand corner and I do want my elements to have a 3D effect on this sign since we will be adding a lighting element. So for the cat I just glued one of those blocks on the back and I'm going to be gluing him down into that corner. Next I'm going to be using my other two wood blocks to raise the wicked sign. I actually wanted the wicked sign to be a little bit higher up than the cat so I'm going to be gluing the block on its side as opposed to just flat. So I hope that makes sense. If you saw in the video the way I glued the cat then you'll definitely see how I'm gluing the blocks here a little bit differently but it just makes more sense when you see it as opposed to me trying to explain it. So I just glued the one over by the I in wicked and then the second one I'm going to be gluing onto the E. And then now that I have my blocks attached, I'm just going to go ahead, add some more hot glue to those blocks and attach it to my sign on a little bit of a diagonal. Now I think this sign looks really cool just like this, but it definitely takes it to the next level when you add one of these string lights from Dollar Tree. After I wrap my string lights around my sign, I will be securing that battery pack to the back. So I do want to leave a little bit of extra line for that. But first, I'm just going to go ahead, take that wire, and I'm wrapping it right around the wicked sign in the back so it will be hidden. And I'm basically just using those tumbling tower blocks as the supports to wrap my wire around. So now that it was all the way wrapped around, I'm just going to be taking that battery pack. And you can just glue this to the back of the sign. Just make sure you're not gluing the part that comes off for the batteries but another option is just to use some of these velcro command strips i like these because that way if i want to remove the lighting element it's super easy to do so and i don't have to rip it off with some glue and i could also reuse these string lights for something else if you are like me and love all things witchy especially around halloween time this diy is definitely for you this one is so pretty lit up at nighttime. And if you can actually find the string lights with the timer, that would work even better for this DIY. Next up, I'm just going to be showing you a really simple and easy way to use these wood DIY pieces from Dollar Tree. So I picked up three of these bats and then one of the witch hats. So for all four of them, I am going to be covering up that hole just like before. So I'm using a little bit of that lightweight spackling from Dollar Tree, filling in the hole, letting it dry completely, and then you just sand it smooth. Next, I painted all of them with this black chalkboard paint from Dollar Tree. I'm actually going to leave the bats just like this. I think they look awesome with that matte black color, but I did want the witch hat to have a little bit more definition. So I just took a sponge brush with some silver paint and I'm kind of just going over it in all different areas. It doesn't have to be perfect. It's kind of meant to look a little bit more messy. And now I'm just taking this glitter spider from Dollar Tree and hot gluing it to the front. 
And here is how they turned out. I love the witch hat styled with a candle and a mini cauldron. And for the baths, I actually attached them to my wall with some command strips. Next, we are going to be creating some witch potion bottles. So I'm starting off with these three jars from the Dollar Tree. I actually found this in their kitchen area right by the plates and mugs. To get started, I'm just going to spray paint the lid of these jars with this semi-gloss black spray paint. But I do want to protect the seal, so I'm just going to cover that up first with some painter's tape. And here is how they turned out after all the lids were painted. So now I'm just going to go ahead, remove that painter's tape, and we are ready to start filling up our jars. I picked up all of these at Dollar Tree. They had a bunch of different ones to choose from, but I decided to go with the eyeballs, the glitter spiders, as well as these mini skulls. So now you can just go ahead and fill up all of your jars. And for the final step, I actually created these labels for the jars, and these are a free printable on my blog. I'll leave the link for this down below in the video description box. So I'm just going to go ahead and cut them out. I did print them out on cardstock, so it would be a little bit sturdier. And now I'm just going to be hot gluing them to the front of my jars. Now you have your own set of witch potion bottles. Next up, we are going to be using these color your own ornaments from Dollar Tree. So I picked up the cat and the witch hat. So to start off, we are going to be covering up that hole just like we did with the previous craft. So I'm taking some of that lightweight spackling from Dollar Tree, filling in the hole, letting it dry completely, and then just sanding it smooth. So after all of these are sanded smooth, we're going to grab some of these tumbling tower blocks. We're going to need one for every two ornaments. So I have four here and basically we want to just paint everything first. I'm going in with that same black chalk paint from Dollar Tree. I really do think it's a really good quality one and it works really well. So once everything had that base color of black, I started to assemble them and to assemble them, I'm just hot gluing the block onto one of the hats and then I will be sandwiching it with another hat on top. And then I'm going to do that same process for the cats as well. We are creating mini wood decorative elements that are great to use in any small area. So these are great on a bookshelf or even in a tiered tray. And depending on which way you glue that block in between the cats, you can even use this to display a name card for a table setting. So now after I had everything assembled, I got to decorating. This is the really fun part. And for this, I decided just to use some puffy paint that I had in this gold color. There are so many different ways you can decorate these. This is the time to get really creative. You can add some fun embellishments to the front or even some glitter. This is another craft that is great for kids. You can just assemble the wood parts beforehand and then let them get super creative with the paint or with the puffy paint in this case here. It's just a fun way for everyone to create their own unique piece. And here is how they turned out. As soon as I saw this spider tray at Dollar Tree, I knew it could be something really special. I actually love this as is. They have it in this gold tone here, but they also do have it in silver. And I couldn't decide which one I liked more, so I did go ahead and pick up both. I'm going to be saving one just to use for dips and sauces on my Halloween table for my Halloween party. But this one here, I will be using for a DIY. So the only thing we're going to be doing here is transforming it with some paint. And trust me, it's going to look so different. So I'm going to be using this gold spray paint here. This is my favorite gold spray paint. And I had a feeling it was going to look so pretty once we had this gold tone on it because it does have a lot of different facets inside of the spider body. It almost looks like a diamond. It's just really beautiful. And here is how it turned out. I think that this looks so high end. It definitely does not look like a Dollar Tree item. You can just use this as a small trinket tray or as a really little candy dish. This light up haunted house is another one of my all time favorites. So I'm starting off with two of these wood cutouts from Dollar Tree. And I'm also going to be using some of these tumbling tower blocks. Just like before, I want to cover up that hole up top. So to do that, I'm just going to be removing the twine, getting some of that lightweight spackling from Dollar Tree, filling it in, letting it dry completely, and then just using a sanding block to sand it smooth. 
Now these are all prepped for painting. And since we are going to be painting quite a few pieces here, I found that the quickest way was just to use spray paint. You can definitely paint these by hand, but there are a lot of little pieces here and it is quite time consuming. So I will just be using the semi-gloss black spray paint. And for this craft, I did need 45 of those tumbling tower blocks. And I did want to paint both sides. So I did a first coat here, let it dry, and then I turned everything over to paint the back side. Here is how everything turned out after it was all painted. You can get really fun and creative with the paint job here and do maybe gold or purple, but I just went with this classic black color. So now I have to start assembling the blocks to basically create a bottom for our house as well as sides. For the base, I hot glued 11 of these blocks together. So now I'm just going to go ahead and add some more hot glue to the sides and then attach the haunted house. Now to create the first sidewall, I'm going to be gluing 13 of these blocks together. Once you have all of these assembled together, you can just go ahead, add some hot glue to the sides, and then carefully wedge it in between those two haunted houses. And then you can just go ahead and repeat those same steps. So hot glue 13 of those blocks together again to create the other side wall for your haunted house. Add some hot glue to the sides and bottom and then wedge it in between. And with my last eight remaining blocks, I'm actually going to be creating a front porch. Now I'm going to start off by just hot gluing these together in this way here but I'm actually not going to be hot gluing this portion to the haunted house after. I did want to leave it where it can kind of be detached. That way I could decorate with it or without. But if you want to leave your front porch permanently attached to your house, once you assemble all eight blocks together, you can just hot glue that to the front of the house. And now the last step before lighting up our haunted house is just adding a couple of decorative elements. So I picked up these mini hay bales as well as these mini plush pumpkins from Dollar Tree and I'm just hot gluing them to the front porch. And now to light up our haunted house, I'm just going to be using some of these string lights from Dollar Tree and these ones are usually found in their floral department. Dollar Tree does actually have a bunch of different string lights for Halloween though in purple and orange colors, which would look really cool as well. So here is how it turned out and I actually am going to turn the lights off so you can see how it looks at night. Similar to our spider tray, we are just going to be giving this skull a transformation with this gold spray paint. This is going to completely transform this plastic skull into a very high-end and luxurious looking decor piece. And here is how it turned out. It still always amazes me how quickly some spray paint can transform an item. We're going to be needing that same gold spray paint for one more DIY. We are going to be creating some faux taxidermy with these bugs. So I found these four bugs actually in the toy section at Dollar Tree and these four wooden plaques were in the crafter square. I chose four different bugs so that way they would each have a unique look, but by using the gold spray paint, they will still all look really uniform. But first, I'm going to get started with my plaques and I'm going to be painting all of them with this black chalk paint from the crafter square at Dollar Tree. Next, I took my bugs outside and gave them all an even coat of the gold spray paint. And now to attach them to their base, I'm just going to be using some hot glue. I think these look so fun when you hang them up on a wall. And the easiest way I actually found to attach them to a wall is to just use some of the Velcro command strips. I just picked these ones up at Target, but I love them because they allow you to hang them on the wall where it's still hidden, but it won't cause any permanent damage when you want to remove them after the holiday. 
For this DIY, I'm going to be using three different Dollar Tree items. The first is this strand of wood beads from the Crafter Square. I'm also going to be using some twine. And the third thing you're going to need are some Halloween felt shapes. So I picked out the bats, but they do have a couple different options to choose from. Finding wood beads at Dollar Tree can kind of be hit or miss depending on the store. So I will leave some options from Amazon down below in the description box that are still affordable. To get started, I'm just going to be taking three of those bats and I want to create a hole on both sides of them. So we're going to be stringing these on a banner. So I just took my hole punch and punched a hole on each side. Next, you're going to need a piece of twine. And what I like to actually do is just create a little loop on the end and then pull that through into a knot. That way when my banner is all done, I have two handy little loops on the end, which makes it really easy to hang up onto a hook. And when I cut my twine, I like to make sure that it is at least 8 to 12 inches longer than I want my finished banner to be. That way I have a little extra room to work with in case I need to trim it as I go. And another helpful tip is just to put a little bit of tape on the end as you're putting your beads onto your strand. It just makes it a lot easier and it stops the twine from fraying. So for this banner here, I used 15 wood beads and then I added in one of my bats and then I continued that pattern until I was all done with my wood beads. And then when I reached the end, I just created another loop and then pulled that through with a knot and trimmed off the remaining twine. And here is how it turned out. This DIY can really fit into a lot of different decor styles and it definitely has a bit of a minimalist high-end look to it. And those are all of the DIYs that I have for you guys today. I hope that you enjoyed this Halloween compilation video. And if you are not yet subscribed, please do consider subscribing. I have a ton of new videos on the way very soon. We're going to have some DIY videos as well as some Halloween treat videos this year. And I cannot wait to share them with you. Thank you so much for watching. To subscribe to my channel, you can just click on my picture right here and be sure to check out this video for some more Halloween fun.